Welcome to the December 17, 2019 Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee. My name is Kelly Robinson, Vice Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and Chair of this committee. Um, just for the record, this particular committee is filmed, it's open to the public, but it is open as an open archive for all the public. As is our custom, before we get to the agenda, we're going to go around the room for at least our main committee members and our special guest volunteers from other departments. We'll start with County Administrator. Uh, Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Dr. Ramona Jackson, Jefferson, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners and Vice Chairman of Transportation. Jamal Jones, Connect Douglas, Transit Coordinator. Miguel Valentin, Transportation Director. Gary Watson, Connect Douglas Transit Services Director. Kenneth Connor, Chief Deputy, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. All right, very good. Miguel, we have Miguel Valentin is our Director of Transportation. He helps facilitate this committee meeting. I know we've got a pretty full agenda, so um, Director Valentin, let's just jump right into it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first item of the uh, first order of business, business would be to adopt uh, approval of the minutes of the meeting of November 19th. Jessica, you have sent out the meeting minutes as we talked? Yes, sir. All right. Can I get a motion to adopt the meeting as we did? Second. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The meeting minutes have been adopted for the record. All right. All right. The uh, first item on the agenda is a presentation related to Homeland Security. I believe Mr. Anthony Jones is here with us. Uh, if you would come up to the podium. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, <coughs> my name is Anthony Jones. Um, I started with the, my greatest accomplishment, and that is you all accepted me into the community of Douglas County. So I've been a resident of Douglas County for now 17 years. Uh, I live off of Highway 92 in the Great Thorn community. Uh, one thing that I, um, I I pride myself in is having, at 17 years old, uh, joining the United States Navy. And that facet of my life uh, encouraged me to focus and pay, continue to pay attention to security. So definitely to the uh, occupation of Homeland Security, I just can't let security go. It, it is a part of my makeup. And one thing about it, we all know, whether you believe it or not, security is everybody's business. And one of the uh, mandates that we have from our headquarters level is, from the service community, um, you must ensure that all of our industry partners are afforded the opportunity to take advantage of the, the Department of Homeland Security, TSAs, all of the resources that we have, because we're not here to change anything, but perhaps we have the opportunity to enhance your security posture, then that is my task and that is what I'm here to do. So the presentation that I have today is just that, basically something that perhaps uh, enhance the security policy, in particular with uh, Connect Douglas. So how did I just pull Connect Douglas out of the air? Okay, I'm doing my, uh, taking my boys trip to Home Depot, and I just happened to see a couple of the buses pull up into the, uh, the Serta or the uh, Greta parking lot. <coughs> so when I saw that, um, I, I, I Call my uh, settlement expert uh, transportation is Khalid Harrell. Let me make that introduction. Khalid Harrell is our service transportation lead. Uh, he pretty much pioneered all of our CETA programs, and I'll explain all of those later. Our base programs and all, all also our exits. He's our headquarters, uh, my headquarters liaison. And uh, so you every ever so often you hear me kind of see me look at him or kind of chime him in, so he can kind of speak on and delve into the particulars. But when I was um, saw the bus pull up into the Surrey parking lot. I gave a colleague a call and said, hey, I said, we did a base assessment with Surrey. He said, yeah, not only with Surrey, we did it with Codlink, Gwinnett County Transit. Uh, we also did Mar Martyr as well as, um, what's the other one? Uh, some schools. Some, and some of the schools, particularly. So he said, well, uh, they've all had the Cedar. They've all had the base. And he, I said, well, check to see if uh, Codlink uh, has had a, a base assessment. He said, I think Cobb Link is, is relatively new, so more than likely they have. I said, okay, well, since they're, they're new, I said, I'm sure they have security posture already. Let's go, you know, knock on some doors and try to get to meet some people and say, here's the thing that TSA has to offer. So I uh, reached out to this office and was invited to this meeting basically to make this presentation of the, all of the resources that we have for, to offer. And the only thing that we ask for is your time. This is free. It's free of charge. 
We are the most flexible. Uh, the answer is yes, unless you give them a reason to say no. And like I said, all of your industry partners, all of the major mass transit organizations have all taken advantage of the resources. So I said, well, if that's the case, I'm in Douglas County. I'm going to afford that opportunity to my brothers and sisters in this community to do the same thing. Because I do believe in a security posture. I do believe in a security fabric. And uh, uh, like I said, started the military on to the Department of Homeland Security. Everything we do is security related. It's a different day we live in. And I just want to give a shout out also to, uh, to Mr. Torbert over here. Uh, he's responsible for transporting the most precious cargo I have, and that's my child. My child attends, my daughter attends Douglas County, excuse me, uh, Alexander High School. Ride the bus every day. And for me understanding, knowing that everything that we have to offer, and they, this, the Douglas County school, school system is on board, I'm proud to say I'm a part of that. Because some school systems have not, you know, uh, taken advantage of it, but the <laughs> Douglas County school system, City of Atlanta, Cobb, uh, Clay County, all of uh, those um, stakeholders have basically said, hey, you know, we can't be too secure, or we can't be secure enough, so whatever you have to offer, let's have it. So um, without further ado, I'll delve into this, this presentation, and uh, stop me anytime you have any questions. I'll make sure I'm not working this. Okay, normally uh, as a credential inspector, um, I position myself in accordance with the law, and um, what most people understand here at TSA, you think about screening. But from the compliance perspective, we are more so in the aviation component. And we are governed and we mandate and we regulate by 49 CFR. 49 CFR, like I said, that's the law in which we must, that what, that's what holds us accountable, that which causes us uh, to ensure that there is a, a fairness across the board. Uh, we have to uh, go out to these stakeholders, particularly in the aviation community, under the 49 CFR uh, 1540. Now with the uh, surface component, which we represent, is the 49 CFR 1580. Now that's the law and the regulatory compliance. What I'm here talking about is that which is voluntary, stakeholder voluntary assessments. Uh, you all can tell me any moment, Anthony, we've heard enough, get out of here. No ramifications, no repercussions, no anything. This is strictly, strictly, strictly voluntary. Everything that we offer from this perspective is strictly voluntary. Um, our, like I said, my, my headquarters has mandated that the resources from uh, baseline assessment, exis, uh, tabletop exercises from the CEDAR program all the way through our cybersecurity. I think I was in the, in the men's room and I saw something about cybersecurity. We have a, we're doing Super Bowl, right? We had a major, major, major uh, cybersecurity workshop. I wish I'd known about you all being associated with the cybersecurity. The invite would have been on you. Because that's one thing about all inclusive. Like you said, security is everybody's business. The three voluntary security collaborations most common. Uh, what opens the door is the base, which is a uh, basic assessment for security enhancement. And what that entails is one of our subject matter experts comes, and I go ahead and because I'm primarily here for Connect Douglas, I'll just explain you what that means. So whatever your security profile is, your security manuals, your security program is. Uh, one of our uh, headquarters or one of our uh, field uh, inspectors will come in and just basically take a look at that, sit down with you and say, hey, you know, having cameras in this area, uh, doing walk-arounds before, you're posting your pre and your, your um, inspections, that's good. Try this, try that. Here's some things that we have. Here's some connections that we have. Here's some phone numbers that you can call. Provided that there is an anomaly somewhere, uh, here's how you can connect to us. So that is the open door to the exits and to the seeker. Again, the base is a basic assessment for security enhancement. Enhancement of what it is, not to change anything, not to say you, you must do this, because I'm not here by the 1580, the law. I'm here strictly as your partner in this industry and to, again, offer you these types of uh, resources. So after a person, after a stakeholder undergoes the base, then we also offer what we call exits. And exits is basically a tabletop exercise. So we come to your law enforcement component and component say, what would happen if? Ask one of your bus drivers, what would happen if this were to take place? What if you walk onto the bus and you see a unattended bag? What's your next recourse? What if they don't answer the phone? What if they don't answer the email? How's we, how, what's your text message component? What's, what's the, 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 the um, reasonable time for uh, returning the call or the text or what have you? Those are the type of small operation exercises that we will facilitate for you. And like I said, it's all inclusive. Uh, moving on from that, uh, the CETA, uh, Security Enhancement Through Assessment. So basically, um, 
Commissioner Robinson is responsible for driving the school bus tomorrow. Now, I would sit back and hope that Mr. Robinson is going to do that pre-inspection. So, Khalid is going to come over, place an unattended bag, drops it. Hopefully, when he sees that bag, or that anomaly, or that security uh, uh, anomaly, he makes contact with somebody. He says, hey, stop. We're not going to put our precious car on these buses. We're not going to put our constituents on these buses. We're not going to put this community on these buses because something is out of place. And who's best to recognize something out of place than someone that does it every day? But well, we know that when people do things every day, you can kind of sometimes come complacent. Sorry. You become complacent. You know, because I walk through that same door every day. I let the garage up the same way. I walk through my kitchen the same way. But as soon as I walk in, I can tell you immediately there's something out of place. But how many of us can walk around the house at night with our doors? Because you know everywhere to go, right? But if something has, if they slide something out of the way, right on. But see, that's what we don't want. One thing we all heard, and I'm not going to use the last word, but complacency, you know what it does. We can't afford to become complacency, but complacent, particularly in today's time. Because it's not, I hate to say it, it's not if something happens, it's when. But one thing I never want something to occur is on my watch. And that's why it behooves me to utilize my credentials in my pocket, the integrity that's uh, <clears throat> entrusted within me, to lay it out to my, my colleagues, to my neighbors, to say, hey, this is what we must do. This is what we should do. And if you allow us to come in and do something like this, we'll be more than happy to assist. Because again, nothing is mandated. Nothing. Baseline assessment for security, basically, like I said, it's a volunteer assessment uh, designed to improve an agency's security posture by identifying security gaps, whatever the anomalies might be. It serves as a foundation for which other volunteer TSA service programs were conducted. Uh, also, since the base inception in 2006, been around a long time, we've basically did over 60,000 daily ride shifts and we've had over 1,200 of these assessments conducted. So this is not, it's just that um, more of the um, uh, larger metropolises take advantage of it because it was in order for it to gain momentum, our headquarters pitched it to the big cities, the Atlanta, the New York, the DC, the Fort Lauderdale, the LA, and so on and so forth, just to get the momentum. But once that momentum, and once uh, people start, uh, um, stakeholders, our industry partners kind of um, latched onto it, then we start basically rolling it out to uh, all some uh, smaller components. Please, okay. well, that's about right. Yeah. Okay. The next thing is, I mentioned earlier, is the access uh, information system. And that's more of a smaller what if type scenario workshop. What if you you're getting ready to start the route and you have, you find that unattended bag uh, on that bus. What if that unattended bag that was on that bus contains a firearm? What if that small unattended bag uh, on that bus has an explosive, an IED? We also have uh, TESI, T Transportation Security uh, Specialists that do IED training. We jump back to my background real quick. I, I uh, built the PSE um, K-9 program for the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security Local TSA. And we have a great relationship with our Douglas County Police Department. We do K-9 um, excursions all the time, particularly with that, in, that um, stakeholder that came in on that one. And we have this big, we use the uh, old courthouse. We used, we, we used to use the old uh, Douglas County Courthouse, and that's where we were doing a lot of our training. So they basically put, plant IEDs all over the place. And um, watch, just watch these K-9 work. Just watch the K-9s work. Amazing. So those are the type of resources that we uh, have at our disposal but at the same time, I want to think again, we just ask for it at the time. That's all we ask for. Nothing's for sale. So that table top exercise would be a small what if type scenario exercise. Again, what if the driver gets sick while there's um, you know, pages on the bus? What if? Because you have to ask those questions. Something is gonna happen. What will you do about it? And those are the type of things you just try to bring out, have a discussion about it, whether you follow it or not, at least you talked about it. So doing an excess exercise is a great time for you guys to bring your uh, your industry partners in, maybe perhaps uh, all the local law enforcement, some federal agencies to come in, sit around the table, and discuss. Like you said, the what ifs. Uh, what if I have a hostage situation on a bus, an active shooter, active shooter situation in the uh, courthouse? Are there any interoperability for communication between Douglas County and Fort County APD and Douglas County PD? So uh, it's a great. Uh, opportunity to get everyone, all the players at the table before something happens. Mm -hmm. When it happens, it's too late. 
Any questions? Well, yeah, let me, let me just, to that point, and again, I've, I've got uh, experts that are in here regarding this, is, and I appreciate what you represent, I, I get it. I, I get what the federal standard means, right? I, I, and I get how you made this available, that it's, 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 a, it's voluntary, right? Um, recognizing that, and I'm sure they'll speak to it while we um, have our active shooting and some of the things we do here locally, you know, how well is, has it been aligned with our neighbors, and it's always about like we could be in our own little world, but how aligned are we across the whole board, right? And I, I think we're doing some of the things with the technology that we're putting in place, um, and some of our you know our, our communications. But I'm curious as to at, at the end of the day, we were walking down the hallway, and and, and again, I have to acknowledge um, Mr. Jones being a citizen. That that's important to disclose. He's a citizen in District Two. Um, but with that being said, we're, we're walking down the hall, and he said, "You probably could walk down here." With your eyes closed, and I'm like, yeah, I can't. So that's when I raised my hand earlier. But that's a different awareness. My, my 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 senses are heightened more. What's the end goal here? And this is and again, this is public, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm putting this out to my reason. You know, there's, it's always the narrative of fear. That you cause fear into people's lives to make them go to action for. What is the intent? Is, it, is there? I'm looking for the, the, the narrative that, that we're educating. That, that there's a purpose for this to be more enlightened, because there's enlightenment. I mean, you would think that like I should be able to walk down the hallway, walk down life, and, and, and be okay. But we're not in that time. But but what is the narrative? What is what is the compelling words to we use? I'm, I'm looking for that. I'm not trying to script or lead you. I'm just no. I understand. You see what I'm struggling yeah, with? There's always that the sky is falling. Sky. We have to do it. But I, I wanted to be more of a I stopped there. Absolutely. And uh, I agree with that because uh, that's one thing I don't like to do. I don't like to live my life in, uh, according to fear and don't, I don't try to, uh, you know, uh, include that in any, any type of uh, promises we, we, we may make. But one thing, uh, a lot these uh, came about as a result of they were intel driven. Okay. So whomever they being counted, the metrics developers and so forth, it gotten to a point where it's saying, you know, there's we may need to start looking at the our industry partners and say, hey, how can we mitigate threat? How can we mitigate certain occurrences in communities, whereas we can be in front of that threat, in front of that anomaly, uh, without necessarily having to be uh, uh, there a reaction. Uh, in particular, I uh, advised the league. I said, hey, this is the first time I've ever walked into the courthouse and I had to walk through metal detector up front. It, it used to be behind. That was the reason why the walk through metal detectors was moved closer to the door, right? With its with its uh, precious assets behind. It. I understand that, and that's the day that we're living in. Not fear, but we're being more precautious than we ever have. You know, unfortunately, I can't let my daughter walk down the street to a, a friend's house uh, like we used to do back in the days. I get on my bike and I'm going for the rest of the day. In fact, I got in more trouble for coming in the house too early, right? So those days gone. Again, I'm not trying to interject fear by no means, but <clears throat> this is a narrative that we can't change in today's time. There is an effect out there that is affecting all of us. Affect the effect, picture pick up which one you want to use. But that's where we are with this. Uh, being a spokesperson for the local aspect is simply being precautious for what has been considered to be a threat to society that's trying to be in the front of it versus be a reaction to it. Gary, uh, Rick Watson, or Chief, either one of y'all want to speak to. Um, obviously, we've got a new system coming online. We're, we're young. We're, we're not even six months in. We're just learning that we've got more than five fingers and stuff. It relates to data and metrics. Um, what do y'all hear? I, 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 I got work with Miguel to sort of bring this thing when this came in. Obviously, you meet a lot of different uh, of citizens out there and people, and you try to you know, bring value. So what do y'all hear? Well, I would just say that we would welcome collaboration with them. As, as a new system, uh, we have safety security uh, measures and procedures in place, but uh, they're very limited, they're very primitive. We, that's certainly, an, it's, I would call it a weakness. And it's certainly an area that we need to improve in. And so any, any way that we can partner with them that they can help us, we would welcome it. No, I agree. I, um, with the new bus system coming on, um, I don't know that we've had any exercises or any contact or communication 
uh, as, as it relates to security and what ifs, what would we do. Um, so I think I think it's a good thing that uh, we're, we're getting this early on. And uh, as you mentioned, we've got a new radio system coming on, so we'll have a lot broader reach of resources um, that we can communicate with. Um, I mean, currently uh, we've got a very clandestine type radio system that uh, we can barely communicate with the city of Dubs Police Department. So um, I think that uh, I think we're we're moving in the right direction. So, so, good. so who's the audience for this? So I get if we embrace this, and again, I, we, you got different areas, different um, focuses. I know Chief has the broader um, protection, uh, you know, against the, what we call, we have 2% two, two year over year, we have felonies, and 10% misdemeanors year over year, right? So we spend, what, 65% of our budget just focusing on basically that 2%, right? Just that, that, that straight up, so, you know, focus. And I, and I think you're talking about that, a number even within that 2%. But, but my question is, Brian, so when we go through these assessments, um, you go through this process, Madam Chair, who are we targeting? Is it the community? Is it, is it, who are these stakeholders? I heard you said your business stakeholders, and I heard it's the bus, but then um, maybe that's the first line of defense, but how do we go, how do we make the citizens aware? I mean, I mean what, what, where is the, I'm looking for the scope, I'm looking for what I'm listening for. Well, you asked me some very easy questions. I thought you were going to tell me that. The scope is my target is connect dots. Your citizens' awareness, that's everybody that's in this room. That's not my concern, if you will. My concern is this that because I'm a citizen, I'm switching my citizen hat. I would hope that you advise me on how great it is to be a part of this transportation system, stepping out of my citizen hat, I want to establish this partnership with Connect Douglas because as it's going to be stated, and let me back up, you said something about um, <clears throat> the cost. That's why I championed that statement when I first brought out, it costs you nothing but your time. And that's valuable. Don't get me wrong, but I don't, and, and, and I don't misuse that. Um, as uncomfortable as I may be making you standing up here representing the United States government saying something is free, it's, it, it's correct. But this is something, like I said, intel-driven, and it's a check on my metrics, check off my work plan, but a requirement that I lay these things out. So that the, the, my target would be Connect Douglas, to get Connect Douglas, establish this, this partnership, liaison between city and, and the federal agencies, these resources that will open up after the, the basic, line, basic assessment for security enhancement is, just say, okay, now you have access to these tabletops, you have access to our cybersecurity, you have access to uh, several other components of our, our, our training curriculum that otherwise you wouldn't. But now, um, I would hope once this radio system comes on board and your security posture uh, uh, increases or strengthens, then it could be the community is advising that. I would never say that we are safe, but we can always say we're safer. One thing we can say, never, ever, ever put yourself out there and say, you know, oh, we are now safe now. Somebody's going to try it. But I will always say we're safer as a result of collaboration, partnership, uh, constituent awareness, on and so forth. So my end goal would simply be the partnership with Connect Douglas, taking a look at the security posture. There's a lot of things you're doing great, I'm sure, because I don't think that perhaps Martyr, Cobley, Greta, Serta, uh, would say, you know, we can trust on our brand. Because you've, I'm sure you probably had to do, I'm not sure, but I would think you have to demonstrate the fact that you will have the minimum level of security, and that's awareness, and that's acknowledgement, and um, you know, things of that nature. So let's take it to the next level. You know, let's make, let's, let's, um, let's, let's make sure that each one of our drivers understand what they, what they should do, provided that something occurs. Please. Yeah, um, I've been conducting these assessments for over 10 years now, and uh, one thing that we've found out, sure. Uh, my name is Khalifa Ram Spector from the Atlanta Field Office, and uh, I've been conducting these assessments, security assessments, for over 10 years now. And one common thread that we're finding out, whether it's the big players in the Southeast, and we all know who that is, or a smaller system, is that we, we realize and we recognize that you guys are governed a lot by the DOT and safety issues, but a lot of times there's no security component to that. So what we're, what we're out here and our mission is to say, okay, we know we got safety down pack, but let's look at the security aspect of 
of your operation, your business, and what and what you're doing. And uh, Mr. Jones had it correct. A lot of the information and the programs that we started, we're trying to be pre uh, pre preactive instead of reactive because there are trends that happen and we have guys at headquarters that are much smarter than I am that crunch the numbers and they look at trends overseas and they say, okay, Israel and over in the Gaza and all that, you got bus attacks, bus bombings, subway attacks and, all, and whatnot. And all that stuff is just, it makes its way over here. So which, uh, what headquarters has done to put these policies and procedures in place for us to come out and offer you guys these programs free of cost and uh, we have we have seen them work. In some instances, the security assessments that we do is a bona fide security assessment uh, for the Department of Transportation. If they say we require you guys to do this every five years, well, you can use our baseline for security enhancement as that, and use it for grant purposes as well. So um, there are some very good programs. I'm not saying it just because uh, I conduct them and I'm a part of it. Uh, we we are here. We're making a difference. And uh, even with the CETA, we come out and we hide some bags on your buses particularly school buses, we can get them ready to conduct that with uh, Mr. Tober. Um, you see some right now effects. We, there's, by the way, there's three phases to the CEDA. You got phase one, we come out, we'll hire some security, some suspicious packages uh, on your buses. And depending on how you guys do for with that, we are uh, set up phase two in which we'll be, um, we have our explosive guys and our intel guy come out and give you guys a briefing as well as uh, bring some inner explosive objects so you get to touch, feel, and smell what these things are. They'll teach bus search techniques for you guys. Then phase three, we come back, back and do a redo of phase one. And believe it or not, we're seeing the numbers go out, go up maybe 80%. So we're, we're seeing some good. That's 80% fine rate. 80% fine rate versus a 10% fine rate uh, in phase one. So there, there are some good programs that we have out there. I'm, I'm hopeful that you guys will take advantage of it, come out, work, let us work with you guys, particularly the transit and, and uh, school buses, and uh, I think you guys will be well pleased. Well, I'm excited about this. Um, I think that the homeland security is very important as we look around, not only at just at the uh, school buses, but just the safety within the schools. Sorry. I had the opportunity to experience uh, Columbine. I was right there. Mm. Uh, at the helm of Columbine, so it was always a leader in my mind. I was, uh, my background is surgery, so we prepared for all the gunshot wounds and things that happened. So I'm, I am fully committed to, to security, served in the military myself. I was married to a Marine and served 19 of his 20 years of service. I'm Navy, so I won't work. And, and it, thank you. <laughs> and, it, and the time is not to just, you, you need to stay ready and on a continuous basis and be prepared. We've had an active shooting uh, event here. The Douglas County went quite well last year. It was pretty comprehensive. Uh, we've uh, received some uh, George, uh, sorry, statewide attention. We had some filming done. So we are uh, engaged, ready to go. And this is just, to me, another step in, in the right direction. So that's what I have. Yeah, um, <clears throat> as I heard you describe this program, it struck me that is similar to something that Homeland Security does for flood events and the same type of interaction between agencies uh, having uh, everybody gather uh, together and, and go through a, a case uh, scenario analysis and, and see how everybody does. So um, I remember going through that on the on the flood uh, prevention side and at that time I didn't know why Homeland Security was involved uh, became involved in that program and now I know why because what you do is similar to what that program was about so uh, so you know I, I believe that we would benefit from it and particularly there, there are a couple of things that you said that sparked my my curiosity one you mentioned is free and there's no strings attached or you didn't use that term something to that effect so um, that that's been explained pretty uh, pretty well but the other thing that uh, this gentleman mentioned was that uh, that phase two of the assessment or the um, yeah your phase two of the assessment you would have some actual uh, explosive 
devices and we would get to touch them and feel them and, and I thought to myself, um, I hope they're not really live. In our, uh, yeah, they're very, in, well, okay, so we have a bouquet of explosives that we, that, that, that we issue, not this group, but like I was kidding. But then you have things like time views and decor. We can drive and throw it all day. Now, now you won't see the C4 out here. You won't see the uh, the powers. You won't see none of that kind of stuff. But what it is, this IED recognition train is what it is. So I'm the driver. I get on the bus. I see some see the anomaly. It's it, all this IED recognition train, not to the scope of an high step uh, exercise where we delve into the weeds. Uh, the, this would, would be a small, 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 small group of whatever. But the inner explosive would be just basically, if you happen to see a box of bag or a school bag with this hanging out, this could potentially mean this. But like I said, it won't be the stuff that will get everyone's attention in there. No, by no means. Yeah, I wouldn't subject you to that type of danger or anything like that. In fact, when I was uh, managing the K-9 department, we would always get the approval from the uh, police authority to say, okay, we're gonna have a joint training operation at the old Douglas County Courthouse. And they were saying, okay, bring this, that, and the other. So yeah, I'm, yeah, that's something we would not. I can't lose my body today. Not even. <laughs> but I understand. But no, that would not be the case. We, no, 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 right, we're close. We've already had some incidents where we've had uh, unattended bags left at our transportation center, and to handle those, we called in our lo local law enforcement to, to assist us with that. I think we handled those, those situations That's well, fine. but That's fine. we're just, we're, we're still novices right, yes. at this. Yes. And see, and one thing I think uh, we were talking this, talking about this to uh, University of Georgia uh, and the Athens, uh, I forget that county, that, well, excuse me, the, the University of Georgia Police Department. And at first they said, well, it seemed like me, we're trying to kill an ant with a hammer. But your ridership, exceeds that where this is should be gathered be captured attention. Well then he came back around and said because I forget the other county areas up there, but they said, hey, this is some of the things that we've taken part in with the TSA. Then we get a phone call back to say, okay, scratch that change of mind, let's come in and do this assessment. So these assessments, it's the because um, Connect Dutchess is a what we call small system mass transit. Uh, unlike Marty and all the other ones, I mean, it takes a long time. This uh, won't at all. It's not terribly invasive. It's just simply saying, hey, let's take a look at your security posture. It might as well, it might very well maybe spot on. But we're partners now, and we'll continue to be partners. When you say, yeah, dang. The thing about it is, is what you know what you tell. And uh, by all means, we you know, uh, enhance the partnership. But, yeah, uh, I just want to speak to uh, when you said the unattended bags. So there's a difference in unattended, and what we would deem unattended, and what we would tend, deem suspicious. Um, working hours, um, you see a bag lying down, it's quite possible it's unattended because you got to travel in public. So someone might have, in fact, left their bag. But if it's beyond working hours, and um, your drivers are required to do a pre trip and a post trip inspection, so your bri driver comes back to the bus bay for the night, does his post trip, there's no bag on there. Because we know that because he does his, he did his post trip, he or she. But in the morning, the driver, same driver comes back to get, get his bus, there's a bag. That's a suspicious bag because no one should have been, had access and, the, and, and if they did their post, their post trip, shouldn't be a bag on there. So there's a, uh, so we do realize that people carry bags on mass transit systems and even in school buses. But there's a distinct difference between unattended and suspicious. Committee, is there anything else? Are you okay? Yes, sir. I'm fine. I would, just, yeah, I would just say whatever we need to do to, to go to the next step, let's do it. This. Uh, I'm kind of going through the last three slides here for the sake of time. But this is uh, one of our seed assessment plants, stuff like this. You know, put uh, place the bags in you know uh, conspicuous locations. Not we're not going to hide them in wheel wells or anything like that. You know, all the bad guys may. But just something like this, whereas I mean, you should be able to do your, your pre and post inspection and pick up something like this. 
like I said, there's a difference between I'm attendant and suspicious. You know, outside of the norm is suspicious. Right? Inside of the, the, the normal scope of things, bear awareness is that I'm attendant, right? And uh, these are just some of the numbers around the country uh, of what we did, you know. Uh, this particular system, uh, 10, uh, 10 bags, 60% fine rate, 7% fine rate, 83, but that's the post phase three is what that is. Majority of the time, it's used between 10 and 20%, right? Because, you know, like I said, we're, you know, things become so mundane and we get so comfortable and, you know. Uh, so, again, these are some of the numbers right here. Uh, phase one, 10%, 32, 55, 66, 7, you know. But, uh, and that's, this is a couple years after we started the program, yeah. right? But it wasn't that good at the uh, That's it. Any questions? And again, I appreciate you know, what I'm hearing is a, a uniformity, a common language, common understanding of, of situation across, across the board. It's real subtle, but it's, it's educational. It, it, I, I get it. Um, you know, it the, the metrics are key to it. Um, it's almost like the ghost shoppers. You know, if you're talking about a culture, and, our, and while our culture has shifted, the shift is, is, is based on education and it's being proactive. So I, I get, I, I appreciate, I mean, I'm hearing something at a higher level, like, okay, I get it. I get where the nation is going. I, I get what you're trying to do, right? It's reaching us in a more, you know, suburban, rural area, but it's like, oh, I get it. I mean, it's real. And, and while we don't want to have, you know, obviously we're in this room to have that, that, that that type of conversation is like, no, this is necessary. And, uh, and, and to the extent, not, and Chief, I know you guys work all levels, and we'll leave that at that. So we just, to the extent that um, County Administrator, you said Jason Milhall is the best person to, to move this along. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. I think we're good. All right. We're going to coordinate with all agencies within the county and outside. We're in. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. And um, uh, I mean, this is, like I said, on behalf of uh, our department, our agency, my federal security directors and assistants and colleagues, uh, thank you. Thank you. And I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So here I leave some of my business stars here. Sure. And um, we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for coming out. Yes, sir. We appreciate it. Pleasure to meet you guys. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. is a presentation uh, from the collaborative firm on the transit services. We have Tori Hill here from the collaborative firm today to give their update and you have the package um, yep. your materials. Yep. Tori, turn the floor over to you. Yes, sir. Right. Hi, Commissioner. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, everyone, for having us uh, again this month, this month to do our monthly update for the Connect Douglas fixed route bus service. I'm going to uh, jump right into the presentation, uh, just highlighting activities that we've done over the month and have continued to do in the area of marketing and outreach. Um, we continue to run ads with the uh, Chapel Hill News and Views. Uh, we're going to have full page ads running through January 2020, uh, as well as uh, Temple Hill News and View ads that have, well, those ads that have run since May into October, and we have refreshed them this last quarter of the year, October through January. Uh, even adding a sticker um, emphasizing the free rides that are being offered through uh, January 1. We put uh, red stickers on our sign, on our uh, ads. We're putting them on the various uh, advertisements that we have put within the malls, table tents, 
flyers and the messaging promoting the free ads that were approved earlier this month by the Board of Commissioners. <clears throat> the Centennial are going to run those ads uh, December 7th, 10th, 17th, and the week of the 21st. We also, uh, if you haven't had a chance to go by, we have uh, electronic advertisements running in Arbor Place Mall, as well as table tent, uh, tabletop uh, tents that also have the uh, free uh, ride stickers on them. And if you flip over, I think, to the next page after the narrative, you'll actually be able to see a picture. I believe it's our page five of what our table tents look like, as well as the electronic signage that's going to run through uh, January 2020. We were able to negotiate um, 30 seconds complimentary service uh, from the mall to run those. On, and I'm sorry, I skipped over. They're running on nine different screens within the mall. So we're pretty excited about that. We've never had that before. Yes, sir. No, I'm just, no, I don't want to get ahead. I'll wait. I'll wait. Keep oh, okay. Going. <laughs> All right. Uh, Connect Douglas Instagram, Facebook, social media postings. We typically post on Fridays. We've been working very diligently with uh, Gary uh, in making sure that we do weekly social media postings. Um, and we have targeted everything from uh, our ongoing um, service to the any specials that we're running or special activities that we're doing within uh, within the county as well as recognizing holidays I believe our next uh, posting will include um, not only saying happy holidays but encouraging citizens to take the fixed route buses to uh, conduct their holiday shopping so we're pretty excited about that we're getting uh, some feedback and we're looking again through running the social media and promoting the free rides through January 1 using that medium. We are also, um, our ongoing outreach includes eBlast e and uh, coordination with the Department of Communications, uh, working. Uh, hand in hand with uh, Director Rick Martin to make sure that we take advantage of not just some of the outreach that we're completing, but making sure that we're using the county resources effectively. Uh, continue on, on through page eight. We regularly, um, up, we regularly put out our brochures uh, regarding the service and the routes um, at these various locations and we have staff that are checking all of these locations at least once and uh, sometimes at up to two times a week just to make sure that the material uh, information is available to the public and um, that we are that well, we're being proactive in getting that information out just to note, we also had a pop-up table just recently at Strayer University, and we plan on uh, doing that on a quarterly basis. We're working right now with the uh, with Breezy Stratton, uh, the director of the, the existing industry workforce and compliance. Um, and we also uh, look forward to developing more partnerships because as the new year, as we get into the new year, we're looking at having uh, pop-up tables at various uh, locations, including large employers and educators around the county. We, um, just a note, what, because um, you're going to see a sample of it on the next page, one of the things that we did is, uh, in working with uh, Breezy, is actually reach out to large employers via survey 
so that we could gain a better understanding of who's working where and do they take or have they ever taken the fixed route bus service and uh, providing that information back to transportation services um, and just so that we see where our riders are coming from and if there is possibly any anything anything that we can improve, change um, as we move forward with our service. And that's, we're just providing that information uh, to Gary and his group uh, so that um, via the, and gathering that information to Gary and his group for evaluation. And this is a sample on page 10 of what that survey looked like that went out to those uh, employers and then in uh, working with the working with Breezy Stratton. Sir, did you, you're still thinking? Commissioner uh, Robinson? Yeah, yeah, no, go ahead. Please. Oh, okay. Yes. And then finally, um, again, as I said before, we're working in conjunction with the Communications Division under the direction of uh, Rick Martin in uh, just a very aggressive uh, marketing campaign that includes uh, electronic and print media and I just included some samples of uh, the outreach that we are doing. So with that, if there are any questions, I'm open. But that's our uh, just brief update for the, since for the latter part of November going into December. Are you all for these updates or you, how, how does the process work? Uh, we're in constant communication with you. Know, Almost on a daily basis. All right. So, so here's my question. Well, I, I, I have to listen more than I can see. So, I, I, so I, I'm, I'm attentive, but it's just okay. it, it's from a different place. So, uh, what I was trying to listen for, I was listening to the qualitative part, but but I'm, I'm, I'm in, I guess my, my ask would be over time, will we get to see metrics? They said for our efforts, tabletops hotel rooms, you name it, wherever y'all put this stuff, I want to see, I'd like to see how that translates into riders. Mm -hmm. um, I, I appreciate Chapel Hill News and 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 correlation between, okay, as my ridership, Mr. Mitch would say, my ridership goes up, right, so we, is there a correlation to our, uh, our, I won't say marketing efforts, but our, our educational efforts, or whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm looking for that, right, I, I need to, I need to get there, will, you, will we be able to get there at some point, and I'm not saying that, can we get there? Well, the best, I think the best way to capture that information would be by uh, onboard surveys where, where you actually talk to the individuals who are riding the bus and, and let them tell you how they found out about it. To get that information, I get it. Yeah. All right, so it's like media bias. It's it sort of like, no, I buy you a certain platform, it, it should be translated, okay, but, but who am I reaching? How many people are not reaching? It's just like advertising a little bit, it's sophisticated. Mm -hmm. we, we could do better. I just put a billboard out there. That ain't enough. Mm -hmm. You got to translate, how does that get my return? You put, like I said, a tabletop, like, well, okay, well, what is my return on that investment? Now, I get that these are all awareness points. You, you get out there. I get it, but the aggregate, so I'm not picking on any one thing, right. but what is the aggregate? And it, and I, I know there's an answer. We could, trust me, there's an answer. Yes. But I, I'm just I'm looking. I'm, so my encouragement is that at the end, this time next year, we pretty much complete the, you know, obviously this upcoming assignment, that this pretty much will will know these things and we can carry ourselves. So you get what we're looking for and it says that for our efforts, you know, if we are going to bring it in house, if we are, that will be have to answer. Somebody will have to answer that question. Um. And actually, in working with Gary, one of the things that we talked about going into 2020 is uh, conducting quarterly uh, surveys on the 
on the service uh, so that, yes, we can talk to the citizens, but then also, I guess, uh, and Gary, you can speak to this, they are they are making some uh, initial efforts right now just to track their ridership. So we would marry the two, and then uh, I believe as we move forward, we'll be able to respond better to what you're asking. Because I do understand if we're going through all of these efforts, tabletops and digital advertisement and you know all of the local papers and trying to reach the citizens to get and encouraging them to use the service and you know special holiday free rides that at some point we should be able to see a, a, a steady incline maybe not necessarily a massive jump but a steady incline on your overall ridership so I, I do hear you and we'll work we'll work directly with Gary to make sure we can respond to that Gary, you got any data for us? We're not yet. Uh, yes, first well, year. Well, no, I've got a, I got a little ridership information for you that we're about to get in just a second, okay. as a matter of fact. Oh, Madam Chair, I'll just bear the presentation. Thank you for the update. Just had one question. I've never heard of Great Wire. Is that where is that located? I see you in the, the companies that you can think of your transit options. Oh, and um, working with Breezy? Uh huh. You know what, Madam Chair, I'm going to have to get back with you. Okay. I apologize. Okay. I will uh, respond, respond electronically and make sure that you have that. Okay. Craig Wire. Yeah. And then also, just uh, what if you could speak to, uh, I think, overall what Commissioner Robinson was trying to um, address this impact. Have you seen anything uh, lately? I know he's looking more on that quantitative side and you know mixed methods. Can you tell me what you are you noticing in enthusiasm with all the, the any synergy out there? What, what's you happen? know uh, on a more anecdotal level? Yes, even as it re as it relates to just responses and positive comments on social media, we have seen an uptake. Um, so, like I said, on on a Anecdotal level, yes, but have we actually done anything in our card measurements? No, we have not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But wait, wait. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Jamal? Uh, well, I'm just going to add, Commissioner, uh, yeah. that to, to Mr. Gary's point, he yeah, I spoke this morning, and to answer one part of your question about do we see in return or in ROI on all these advertising and marketing? Um, so we do have some slight, and Mr. Gary is going to share with us, so we have had some ridership since we put these things in place. Good. And he and I were speaking earlier this morning, we, we look forward to growth. We know it's going to be a small baby steps, but we do anticipate still even further continued growth. What are you hearing directly, not getting Gary's role and Tori's role, but with, with, what are you hearing? What, like, what, what's your, you know, again, it's not a right or wrong, I'm just curious, what, what, what's your perspective? Uh, my perspective from the calls that's coming in and even speaking to the drivers, uh, which I also share with Mr. Gary, um, that you know they're still receptive, still learning. Uh, the, the clients are loving the service, uh, or the driver passengers are loving the service. Uh, and then with our even our ADA and flex trip, uh, flex trips are still growing as well. Um, those are a, a very popular. Uh, people use those to get to work and other practical appointments. Mm -hmm. um, and then the ADA continues to still grow as well. As soon as we can get the clients uh, approved uh, for our system, uh, they're utilizing it uh, exponentially. So we're just looking forward to continuing to grow. And, and so then collectively, um, as a group, we're, as we're hearing these stories, you're, you're capturing all this feedback um, through your efforts, through your call center, um, yes, or collectively. A call center, but you know what I'm saying, the call center. How are we doing with that call center component, which is always that, where surveys are all nice and, and you know, you want to be nice, whatever. Mm -hmm. At that call center, is that thing like, okay, I'm pissed, with, where the bus at? Or uh, I need some help, or I'm lost, or how do I schedule this? Or I'm getting lost and I'm caught in this loop, and I'm, those are the typical bad side of things. It's working, what's volume, how do you do? Yes, yes, sir, it's working, and there's always still room for improvement. As we continue to see how, ever-changing that the clients are to make sure that the call center is well versed in knowing how to communicate our efforts and our transit system to them and how they're supposed to schedule their flex trips 
uh, and also uh, obfuscated their ADA paraphernalia trip. I think one of our biggest challenges with the flex trip, uh, which we've talked about in the past, was that they were thinking that it was like a demand response type, that the driver would wait on them, wait outside. But no, when you do the flex trip, we have to re-educate the public that they need to be outside waiting for the bus when it gets there. Uh, it's just like a regular fixed route trip, so when the bus comes by, it picks them up, flexes, and gets them back on the regular route and continue on. So those things we make sure that the call center is now educating and also advising the public of that when they schedule those trips. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, that's breakthrough. Like, that's, yes. that's, so it's not like Uber where it comes on demand and it waits, right? You're saying that it, it may come, but it'll keep moving. That's correct. So it's just like a fixed route. You have to be, once you schedule your flex trip, you have to be out there and watch that scheduled time or estimated time they told you of arrival of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But if the ADA, like for example, you were my over people will walk into my door if I need them, like, I'm good, but you get my point. Yes. It, it will be, so there is some, some degree of separation between normal be out front what, and another somebody has ADA, is that true? That's correct. A ADA will do the door-to-door uh, the -door or curb-to-curb, which are the ones that on a case-by-case basis. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miguel. Or yes, sir. Or, uh, yeah. The next item on the agenda is uh, the ridership report uh, from our transit services express program. You have a, a, a sheet in your package. Yep. Uh, I want to report that since since we launched on June the 20th, when you consider our standard one-way boardings, flex trips, and our ADA paratransit trips. Mm -hmm. We've had 14,519 boardings. And to Jamal's point, uh, as you can see, the flex trips and ADA paratransit trips have been very popular. We've had 1,588 flex trips and 1,142 um, paratransit trips. Uh, we've, we've been in service for 151 days and that equates to an average boarding per day since our launch of, of 96 people. Uh, I also want to report that when you consider the first 13 days of December, compare them to the first 13 days of November, our ridership is up 8%. And the free ride, the free I would, I, would, I would say it's had a little bit. Yeah. But um, you know, you're not, also, you can see how we're doing route by route. Um, route 40 continues to be our, our strongest route, followed by Route 20, Route 10, third, and then the fourth route is, is Route 30, which is still lagging behind uh, with the, sh the smallest number. Of, of riders yeah. and, and again connecting uh, residents with the commercial district is, is part of the, the overall objective making sure people have a chance to get to those businesses who were, who were subsidizing this to a certain extent through their taxes as well my, my question is for the 40 to your point that's the one that's is that the longest route would that would you consider that to be the longest by way of and yeah, Miguel would say. Yes, yeah. That's the one. And this is the one that connects all three? Mm hmm Does it connect all three? Yeah. Yeah. It yes. connects all three. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep on. Uh, that's basically the, the quick ridership report uh, that, that I wanted to give you. Yes, good. Uh, slow and steady. Yep. Get through the holiday season and stuff. All right. So, all right, so people are, are again, it become more of an education and awareness, so I get on the bus and maybe that would turn into, as opposed to sort of a, a seasonal rider, it, it becomes a little bit more um, non-seasonal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that, and obviously, they got to see where it goes to get me where I need to get to. Um, and then, you know, obviously, that's your most determining factor, right? It has well, to get me where I'm going. Well, we're developing a, a, a solid core of people who are counting on the, the bus to get them to work, to school, Yep. to other import, important appointments. And from that core, if we're running a little late or if we're not doing something right, they, they let us know about yeah. it because they are depending on that bus to get them to where they need to be. Yeah. Yeah. The timeliness is, is key, and plus and minus, that's, 
that's the core measurement, especially those who provide, like, you know, I gotta go, I, I'm, I'm out here. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that's one key performance metric we always want to keep on, on, on time, that, that, that whatever you want to call it, keep on time. Mm -hmm. Not sure we're talking about KPIs earlier. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. okay. yeah, 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 we got. Nick, uh, can I say if I may offer a comment uh, to follow up on that? Yeah. Sometimes um, when you have, or give the opportunity for people to be exposed to the system, they may use it just because it's free or because of a particular need on one day, but once they become acclimated to that system, they think of it as an option versus uh, being either not knowing that they could utilize it at all or not knowing how. Yeah. And so it could be that this additional ridership may not translate to full-time riders or, or you know, everyday riders um, right away, but it does plant the seed in, in the, in the uh, minds of uh, uh, the riders that this is an option that at some point I can avail myself. Well, seasonality versus oxy conversion, so mm -hmm. got it. All right, guys, keep going. Okay. All right, the next, next item on the agenda is uh, also from Connect Douglas, uh, some route uh, changes that we could consider for next year. Yeah. Let me see if I can get this more to work here. Okay, let's let's start with Route 10 and the, the changes that we're looking at. For it. Currently, Route 10 starts north of Douglasville in the Onopri Circle in the Alwine Apartments. Mm -hmm. What we're proposing for Route 10 is for the start of it to be at the Transportation Center. And from the Transportation Center, we're going to go to Hospital Drive, Fairburn Road North, at the Veterans Memorial Highway. Can you make that a little bit bigger? Uh, Two hands. Just gonna get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, like a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll let it sit. There we go. Oh, yeah. That should cover the whole. Or does it? It might be too. It's too long. Because the route goes all the way up here. Yeah. I can slide down. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Is that a little better? Okay, I think I think we can do an objective okay. here. But anyhow, instead of starting up here at Opry Circle, we're going to start at the transportation center and work our way up back up to Opry Circle. And from there, the route is basically the same till you get around to Campbellton Street. And on Campbellton Street, what we've been doing is going straight across the railroad track back up to Opry Circle. But what we're proposing instead of doing that is making a right turn on Spring Street, going back down to, to Fairburn Road, back down to Hospital Drive, uh, and then to Doris Road and into the Transportation Center. Now, the, the one main reason that we're proposing this change is that for somebody who starts off on Route 10 and they want to make a transfer to Route 40, they're having to make a transfer uh, to Route 20 in the middle. So we're taking that middle transfer out, uh, making it more convenient and more accessible uh, to the people who are wanting to make that, that transfer. And we're also opening up this stretch of hospital drive from the courthouse to Fairburn Road that we currently don't have service to. So that's that's the changes right now that we're proposing um, for Route 10. Uh, and Jessica, how do we get it back to the well, I see the now. Okay, so let me make sure I get this right. So Route 10, what was the route that started at Jesse Davis uh, that went across the railroad tracks down to, I don't know what that street is, so in the public library, public health. Is that this, this route? Yes, sir. This, Route 10 does that. Uh -huh. it, it goes, so it's, but so it, it goes on Simpson Avenue, Chicago Avenue, West Strickland Street, to Veterans Memorial Highway West, Gurley Road, down by, by Hunter Park, 
uh, Walmart, and then back up Rose Avenue to Selman Drive where the Library and Health Center is. So Route 10 does serve that, those locations. I'll, I'll look at this. I'll come back. All right. Keep going. Okay, so that's Route, route 10. Yeah, I mean, when you make changes, the question becomes, when did you give up? Um, there's going to be questions. Why change it? I get we're talking about convenience of the transfer, but that's at the other end. Uh, third. So just anticipate serious questions on that one. Sure. Okay. Okay, now this, this is Route 30. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about Route 30. We're not proposing a lot of changes to it. And the changes that we are proposing basically are up around the, the Walmart. Currently, this route starts at the Walmart on Thornton, Ro Thornton Road. What we're proposing to do is to, to come around this loop on Interstate West Park, Parkway and start the route at the Hilton Garden Inn okay. and make this loop back around Interstate West Parkway back to the Walmart. And from there, the route is basically the same. It goes across, straight across Thornton Road and Blair Bridge Road, makes a left on the Bob, Bob Arnold, yep. and okay. then gets back on Thornton Road, comes comes down to Riverside where it gets Cold Class, Medline, yep. Tributary, uh, and the Red Cross, and then it just come, comes back, back up Thornton Road, and makes that, that very same loop and, and ends up at Hilt Garden, Garden Inn and, and starts up. Uh, the route all over again. Um, we put a lot, thought, we thought a lot about the changes for this. And right now, we just didn't think that there were very many other changes that we could make to this route. We know the ridership on it is, is low, but we're not really ready to give up on this route, too. Um, as Tori said in her presentation, we're really making a concentrated effort to build relationships with those those businesses along Riverside Parkway, Thornton Road, in that area there, and, and we just feel like we need some more time to establish those relationships and and to to make their employees more aware that this is an option for them to get to and from work on. All right. So again, I'm going to put some thought into the logic. You know, in that area quite well. So we're going to connect with the hotels and take them up Riverside. But if I'm visiting a hotel and there's eight hotels, I'm trying to get where the food is. I'm trying to get where the entertainment is. Now, I get it may help me if I'm there during the day to get to maybe one of the companies are there, and I guess I could take the bus, but if I don't flew in, I probably have more options per se, but okay, I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I mean, again, if you're trying to maximize a fixed route, but as an option for those who don't have, right? So it, the key issues, if you listen to the hotels that are out there, you know, for the tourism people, that like, okay, people want options across the, the highway. Your issue is that highway to make that route more effective. If you get that geographical divide, right? You got you know, Chris Pumper and I have had this conversation before. But, but that's that's a key issue. It's like okay, but you're you're looping this this business district. We got to think about what we're doing. We got a bunch of like 200 rooms, 100 rooms per hotel. That's like a thousand people. And what we're doing is routing them. This is not. I'm, I'm just talking about. We're routing them along a corridor up tributary, loop back down route. We stop at Walmart. Okay, so if I'm if I'm there as a family union. Tourism. I'm there for family. I'm there for all these things. I'm going to go to a business district. I can't get no more food. I can't get to the entertainment. I can't get to new molds. I can't get to anything that if I'm staying at the hotel, I would want to connect. Now, I get you're saying we probably can connect at Walmart. But I'm like, so we just, and I get that highway is an issue. But, but that's, y'all need to think through that. Maybe you loop back since you're on Barbara Island, you go up there by Colonial. You need to get around that congestion, obviously, right there by that, hot, that 20. But I'm thinking that business district, that, that 30 should be all of Thornton, all the way across the highway. I don't care how you get there to the end. 
and you, you wrap that 40 some other kind of way. It's just, you, you, you're, you're isolating it. You're isolating to, a, to where people go home at night, you're sitting in hotels to an empty place, ain't nobody there in the business. I mean, it's like, okay, so where are you sit? It, it, it doesn't connect with anything. Now, I get it, but I'm saying, I mean, I gotta connect. I mean, I'm right there, and I gotta now connect. I can go to Walmart, but I can't get to the nightlife or get to some of the, the better things I would get to across the highway. It's something to think about. It's just, it's just my, my initial thought, like, again, every now and then commissioners will weigh in. Uh, but it's just something that in living it, to give a perspective, this is, that, that spent a lot of time down there. Uh, and, and talk to the people who work there, live there, who meet me there. Mm -hmm. that, that is like, yeah, but I, I talk to the people who, the sons, the daughters, the, the, the colleagues, my brother, I got to pick them up. And, and, and I, I talk to the, the general man. I, I talk to, well, I appreciate what their staff make. I'm like, I talk to them too. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's like, okay. How do we bridge that gap? So it's a challenge. It's not a person. It's like, guys, how do we connect? Think about it. We got a business district. It's almost like we're continuing to impoverish it. Like, okay, we're going to add more, we're going to add a thousand more people to a bus route that goes up Riverside. Up to Cherry Cherry. There's no Oz Pizza. There's nothing there. Where are you sending them? They will come right back down. They go, hey, we can hang out at Wally World. I get it. It's like we, we can offer them better than that. So if you're going to cater to them, too, I mean, we just came from something. These guys, 278 hotels. I mean, sharp development, sharp apartments. Six, you know what they call them, Wood Springs. Um, new, new, new hotel. This is their sixth one um, in that, that flag, but the first one in the Atlantic area. Just their culture, their language. It's like, okay, that's what I'm talking about. Right? Tell, tell, tell the West Side to come take a look at those guys. Go partner with those guys. And it was one of those where, you know, think about what I'm about to do for his citizens. I'm going to take them on a, a ride. Up. I mean, his, his guests and stuff. And I'm talking about we're partnered and that, that we actually understand tourism and that, that you know, I'm claiming that we actually know how to drive through digital media, that we actually can pull this off. And I'm listening to and I'm listening, and I'm like, but how are we supplement this market? I mean, you get what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm trying yes. to... Total, totally valid point. And actually the reason <clears throat> that we changed to this loop was at, at the request of the hotel motel owners on, on that loop. So we did respond to their request, and, and to your point, once we try this and, and we see, we continue to get other requests from the hotel motel owners or their, their guests, we'll, we'll change again. I, I can pretty much guarantee you this won't be the last changes we make to Route, route 30. This is the first step. Gary, uh, Gary if, if I may. Uh, is there a possibility of looking at Route 40 to do some of what Commissioner Robinson is suggesting? We've, we've had a lot of talks about that, uh, and that is a possibility, but, but right, we didn't want to make a lot of just major significant changes to the routes this early in the game. We still wanted to to give what, what we put in place to start with a, a chance to see if it's going to work. So, you know, let us give it a little more time and, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, Keep going. I, 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 I guess. Just, I just Madam Chair, please read. Um, Gary, are we planning to add bar uh, on that move route with all those little hotels with Springs and uh, Marriott, New York? Yes, ma'am. We, so we, we circle around oh, the bar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. He's picking them up. And so, okay, that's yes, it. Uh, I know what you're saying, but they're not going anywhere. Right. Saying, just right. Just, 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 you want me to go over it? Right. And, and if I may, Commissioner, hey, it's it's free. In, indirectly, uh, because it still makes the connection or transfer point, Route 30 to 40, um, and vice versa, at the Walmart. Uh, again, as I say, Mr. Gary is saying, we don't want to make any drastic change without first having going out to get public uh, public opinion of, of where they want to go, where does the bus, you know, where would they like to see the change of the bus at. So what we did with 30, we made the concession that we make this change, 30 is still going into Walmart, whether you can make the 
connection to Route 40 and go north on Thornwood, back over across. But right now, 30, we didn't make the change, so it can go itself directly over the ridge north on Thornwood. Wait, 30 doesn't go. No, it doesn't. That's what I mean. You were saying, well, I may be saying the direction, but across where all the restaurants are places are. Yes. Okay, let's let's, on. let's take a look at yes. four of Yeah. You want know, somebody had questions? Okay. Yeah, keep going. All right, let's take a look at 40. All right, and this is connector route from, from Douglasville over to Thornton Road, Vithia Springs. And the way that it is operated, it leaves the transportation center, goes up Fairburn Road, and hits Interstate 20 up to Lee Road. And as you might expect, uh, more than one occasion, the buses got caught in I-20 traffic after accidents. Right. And also keeping that in mind, and also because we've had requests for service uh, south of uh, I-20 on Fairburn Road, we're making this ch change or we're proposing this change. Uh, leaving the transportation center, uh, going all the way down Fairburn Road to Lee Road. Mm -hmm. making a left turn on Lee Road, going back up to uh, South Sweetwater Street, uh, Street, and then basically the route after that is the same as it has been. So the major change on this is just getting off the ex expressway mm -hmm. and coming down Fairburn Road to Lee Road. A um, couple of obvious things about that will avoid this interstate twin traffic mm -hmm. and uh, we feel like we'll pick up some ridership from people going to the city's municipal building mm -hmm. south of uh, the expressway and also uh, that intersection at Fairburn Road and Lee Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like we've got some potential for some ridership there. So that's what that was the basis uh, for, for those those changes. Uh, Jamal, Jamal made a good point. Our, our, our process on this, if it's agreeable to the committee, is we wanted to present it to you first today and then after that uh, we'll go out in January and hold public meetings at the various locations along these routes where we're proposing the changes. Uh, we'll get input from the public at those meetings uh, and based on that, your comments and staff comments uh, will finalize the changes that we want to make and then bring them before the Board of Commissioners uh, for their approval of, of the changes. All right, so, all right, so two, two things. I, mean, I appreciate it, what you were suggesting regarding the, the 40 route. Um, I think you'll pick up an awful lot of writers. I mean, go back to Commissioner Emeritus, Lowell Care's comment that I did not disagree with having um, a bus go down the highway, there's it, it, no return on that, right? It's just, you know, just the sunk cost, wasted gas, et cetera. So this made sense. So, okay, so yeah, you're picking up all those riders, and not just the magistrate, but is that, that's a lot of density going down the Lee Road. There's a lot of people that live along that can come from those those side areas. And you go down Lee Road, and you've got apartments, you've got uh, a high school, you, 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 you're, you're hitting a, a lot mm -hmm. um, uh, accordingly that you could potentially pick up. So that one, you probably will see a, a big lift. But I want to come back to the process. Uh, before you go to the public, I'm going to highly encourage you to go talk to the other district commissioners before you take one foot outside this courthouse. You need to make them aware. Do not let them get caught off guard that we're out here promoting something today and have a chance to even see. We learned that last time. Um, do, do not, so we're, no, no changes have been made. We make sure we show courtesy um, um, in that all five commissioners, no matter what, I mean, respectively, we're just saying the whole group gets to you know, go do your one-on-ones, something that Chris Pumpy is very good at. He makes sure he goes and he, he talks to each one of us individually. So this is something you may have to do a little road show, but I'm trying to encourage you. We can absolutely do that. Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. I just, for the record, so that they sure. don't say that it wasn't said or that there was some type of assumption or something got moved or nudged or tweaked. It's not, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. Do that. Do that. Right. Yes, sir. We all clear? Mark, you yes, sir. You that was enough. Miguel, are you okay? I'm good. Yes. Right. So, so really, it's administrative concurrence, no real, nothing yet other than go out to the commissioners first. Yes. Then you can set up your normal federal process of going out making change by going to get stakeholders, correct? Absolutely. Right. Make sure that's explained yes, to them accordingly. Okay. okay. I'm good. Thank you.
All right, yes. The next item on the agenda is uh, related to the bus stop uh, signs. Uh, we had some discussion at the last meeting, and uh, we got an update on that. Jamal, okay. I'm turning the show over to you on okay. this. One. Yes, sir. Um, well, I, I missed the original meeting, but the, I, I guess the voices were heard, and we made a precise decision to go out and make those changes to a sign and get it out for the public. Uh, so it would be more visible, um, uh, more, uh, I guess, in a, a, a viable area where they can see it, they understand, they know what the sign looks like. And so without further ado, we're going to do our little unveil we've had hit up under here. you got a reveal? Yes, sir. Let him, let him. Right. So this, this is the new sign uh, proposal. So obviously we made the sign much larger uh, as it was, was requested. Okay. Uh, again, we have the, the bus stop, uh, and then we also put our Connect Douglas colors on it. So now it's just not the, the all the white and the black stone in the background. So now you have the Connect Douglas logo in the middle, and also we have the word route. And what we're going to do is put actual, the routes. Numbers. Yes, sir, the route numbers on all the signs. So where you have multiple routes um, going down the same corridor, you'll see multiple numbers up there for each route. And uh, for mm -hmm. individual routes, they'll be just like this one, the Route 10 or whichever route is on. It'll be on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other caveat we made to the sign it's now it's going to be double, double sided. sided yes okay it's going to be double sided yes yes sir double, check, double can y'all see this would y'all be able to see this at night is it trans whatever it was it called uh, uh, reflective uh, uh, again yeah. we have to stay within ADA regulation uh, to make sure the sign is not reflective but we can we will be able to make sure that the, the numbers that they will be able to see those they will be bright enough numbers so if a person is walking or because you got street lights close to or near it will be visible very mm -hmm. visible that's all I'm trying to say. Can you see it at night? Or does yes. it just blend in? Do we think the colors are vibrant? I mean, they're, they're, they're rich enough or deep enough mm -hmm. for, for people to see. The one that you, the, I mean, I heard someone of the, some of the feedback was like, well, we like the signs. They're, they're cute. We, we, they're cute. They're creative. But what were they, the, the, the feedback was we're looking for something more utilitarian. The traditional hospital H this way, blue, whatever, you know, caution, etc. So they're looking, you know, signs sometimes have authority associated with them, right? The things that we took when we were back getting that um, driver's permit and stuff, and we had to you know the symbols associated with certain things, right? It, it's about you know, directions and authority, and so the symbols, right? And so, but and part of that came with colors red means stop, I mean, uh, amber means this, blue means this, parks, green, etc., whatever the color is. So I guess we were. And all of our creativity, and while everybody loved the design, and, and again, I, I appreciate the new wave that we're in today, did we over miss the basic function of that this is the bus stop? Right. And so, that's why we now put on the newer sign, the, the actual word bus stop with the symbol of the bus. Mm -hmm. And again, made it in larger print, so it would definitely be clearer. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You like it, Mr. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I like it. What do you think, Jessica? I think it's nice. Mm -hmm. you can. Well, you're being courteous by saying yeah. it's nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like the size of it. It's a lot bigger. Yes. 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 I, I have a suggestion. I, I don't know if it complicates the manufacturing of it much, but what if you were to outline, now you have a contrast between the background color and the, the lettering. What if you were to also outline the lettering so that um, there is a, a boundary between, say, the blue of the background and the and the letter B for bus. Yes, sir. And again, everything has to be by ADA uh, specs, so we can look at that to make sure there wouldn't be in violation, to make sure they wear compliance. Because mm -hmm. that would give it more contrast if you did that. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll look into that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, okay, real quick, how tall is that? Like, oh, yes, the, yeah. the new dimensions are um, 18 by 24, so it's 18 across 24 inches depth. And that is a pretty typical That's sign. That's a campaign sign, almost. I'm well, not familiar with the sorry, it's all signs as much, <laughs> but my yeah. traffic signs, yes. that yeah. is a typical. So we did go up from the, our significant 15 by 21 to, go up to 18 by 24. Okay, that's yes. great. A bit wider and how to off the ground. Say I know poles are still. I think we drove them 10, 10 feet. Uh, 10 feet. Yeah, they're going to be at the bottom of the sign needs From to the be seat, yes. seven feet high. Above. 
75. So it'll be over my head. Yes. I'll yes, walk, sir. At least from at my height. So if I'll be able to walk, you won't run the bike. Exactly. Right. And also, this is just a, a sample, but they're going to be rounded, rounded curves. So a radius, what they call a radius curve. So, so in I'm case okay. someone was have I'm a okay. child on the shoulder or on the head, if they were up under here, it wouldn't have the, the, the potential to cut it. Yes. No, I get it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. I like it. I mean, awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, so what's your next step? With uh, well, with I, that that was my question coming to you. Do uh, do we have the administrative concurrence to go ahead and start manufacturing these, or do we need to bring them before the full board of commissioners? The full board see it. We agree that anything that was structural or material like this would be shared with them. So um, I only think you need to put on the. How fast are you trying to get this down? Because you only got one more meeting. Well, if, if we've got to bring it before the full board, my, my suggestion on that would be to bring it uh, to them at the second meeting in January. First, the first meeting? Uh, well, with that, I mean, just, it's a very quick, very quick presentation. What do you guys think? A work session is it necessary? Yeah, you don't have to vote. I don't. I, I'm not looking for a vote for this. Break the work session. Okay, so yeah, yeah. make sure you're on the agenda. Yes. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's all I was thinking about. I wasn't thinking about a vote. Yeah. This is administrative. It was just something that we all acknowledge that we need to do better at it. So it was. We sort of improved the sign is how it came. You know, mm -hmm. full board. So I, I, I'm comfortable with that. We get away in. What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the work session. I mean, okay, that first work session in January. Keep it simple. Just, hey, guys, new, you know, first of the year. Five minutes. Yeah, real quick. Real quick. And, and essentially, it would be a presentation. It's yeah. Just information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just FYI, guys. What do y'all think about this? Real FYI, quick? here's a new sign. Yes, Any thoughts, co comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just a happy new year. Keep it moving. Okay. Thank, thanks. So, so that oh, means that before we go uh, mass production on this, we should wait to see if they have any input. Yeah. Um, okay, of course. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's the Please. purpose of the first meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So administrative concurrence, because mm -hmm. the board asked you to actually redesign, so you know, there's no recommendation from us. I say let it go for it to the full board. I'm sure I'm very genuinely ready. Mm -hmm. And Mark, also, you okay. know, there yes, there's some nuts and bolts placed in the signage. Will it damage the side, or where are you planning along uh, the side? This Yes, it's going to be along the side in the gray, okay, this gray area. Okay. Uh, cause again, because it's going to be double side. Uh, okay. And that's something Ms. McGill and I said we'll talk about and uh, look offline to make sure that's going to be able to accommodate the signs. Okay. Yes. Double side. Mm, that's very nice. That's what the technical people have got to handle that. Okay. All right. Come on, guys. Let's keep going. Thank, thank you, Jamal. Yes, Miguel. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice. All right. The next item on the agenda is related to the Chapel Hill four intersection lightning project, yep. return lines project. And, uh, we had some discussion a couple meetings ago related to uh, the moving forward with a design that included or incorporated some elements of the future project, at, at least as it related to the right of way. And uh, Part of the discussion was, well, what what is it gonna what is it gonna cost? What are we looking at? So I reached out to the uh, uh, to the designer and uh, I've been able to get some comparisons so that we could consider this um, before we get too far down the road. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that uh, one of the things that they uh, pointed out was that, in fact, not only, because uh, let, let me back up a little bit. Initially, we started out with a project that involved widening the road to three lanes to provide a left turn lane into four different side roads. And then we realized that there, were, there was a sidewalk project along the same road and so we looked to incorporate that, and so it became a joint sidewalk and turn lane project. As we were developing the design for the, for the combined project, 
uh, we recognize that the right-of-way that's out there is rather wide already. Uh, however, there would be potentially a, a need for us to either incorporate sidewalk on one side and a ditch section on the other side, which requires more right-of-way or more real estate, if you will, could still be within the right-of-way. Or we could consider, since we're going to have sidewalk on one side, uh, that that side would be would have a curb and a grass strip and a sidewalk. And then the other side, we could consider going ahead and putting a curb on that side as well in anticipation of the full widening of the road. We would, we would set it back sufficiently so that, uh, and we would do the same thing with the drainage, so that when the widening project came online in the future, um, we would not have to redo a lot of this stuff. It would be in its rightful place for the future component. So that would have entailed uh, or would entail getting the right of way that we would need for the future condition as part of this project. So now we're back to the discussion that we had a few months ago related to what is that going to cost us? Uh, and that's what these numbers reflect. Essentially what the, what the design is telling us is that not only could we do uh, the right-of-way acquisition uh, with very little additional right-of-way property. In fact, we, we would be able to do this without acquiring additional right-of-way, but we would need additional easements. So it would go from a little less than one acre total along the nearly mile-long stretch um, 0.93 acres for the three-lane configuration or 1.43 acres in the full future configuration for five lanes. So essentially we would be buying an additional half acre of easement, no additional right of road. And temporary easement would be actually a little less in the future condition, but, but comfort. So going from what we had planned initially to getting the right-of-way easement, right-of-way and easements <coughs> for the future condition, full widening entails the acquisition of an additional about half an acre of land. So that's on the right-of-way side. On the construction side, the estimate for developing the three-lane with sidewalk only as we have been progressing over the last many months. Uh, the cost estimate is a little under 2.5 million for the project. If we were to design this for the future condition and build it now, we would be able to do that for slightly over three million. So essentially what what the designers are telling us is that not only there isn't much of a change as it relates to right-of-way, but you can actually not just design for, but actually design and build the future condition, the full four-lane widening, for an additional $612,000. If we, if we continue and just built the three-lane configuration now at two and a half million, when the widening move forward in the future, it would cost an estimated 1.5 million to get it to the five-lane configuration. So by doing it now, it will cost 600,000 in the future, be 1.5 million, a difference of a little over 900,000 in savings by advancing that component. If we did three lane first and then did future later. Correct. So we have to, got demolition on curb, we got demolition on the side, Correct. we got relocate storm drains. Correct. Possibly utilities. Correct. All that stuff. Right. 
and the construction cost would be right. and we would have to go back out to get the right of way for that so so that component um, if we advance it now it essentially what what's happening is that I, I'll, I'll give you a little back, background to try and see if you can visualize it if you do not put well, when you put curbing on, on the road edge you have to do drainage it goes with it because the water can't flow beyond that so the question is okay so if you are going to curb it you have to develop the drainage well if you're going to develop the drainage at the three lane configuration you're going to be putting that pipe in the way of the future development of the future widening mm -hmm. so so if you get the right of way and you set it back to where it would be in the future it's underground it's doing what it needs to do but it's not in the way of anything so so no throw away as it relates to it and the excess payment would be half that that's correct so you could you could actually again for a little over six hundred thousand you could advance not only the three lane configure the full five lane widening of the road mm -hmm. And it would be hashed out until it is utilized in the future, but it would be constructed at its proper location. Now, so the question that I would anticipate, because I've heard it a lot, uh, raised a lot, is how is this going to impact our budget? And essentially, the design is progressing now to the point where we have to give the designer guidance on okay do you stay with the three lane configuration or do you branch to the five lane configuration that process once we give them the direction that process would play out in, in terms of design probably six months maybe a little more. so at that point you would be ready to begin right of way acquisition which essentially is not right of way it's going to be mostly easement Mm -hmm. But for purposes of the exercise, it might as well be right. But it's just this complicated. The point I'm making is so 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 we have say six months to seven months of design effort. Then we're ready to begin right of way acquisition because of the number of parcels we're talking about. At least a year to 15 months. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at close to a two-year window before you're actually bidding this out for construction. So that is how the impact is in to the cash flow, essentially. It would be delayed by minimum a year and a half, more like two years. So you'd be looking at uh, bidding the project out in the middle of 20, 2022. Okay. Right. Well, and I'm obviously I've been listening intently for the moment. So, what's being suggested? We're going to expand the scope for an existing contractor to be able to pick this up at a, a point in which and this is where we're going to go. So, we're going to go down the path of one from three lanes to five lanes. I get um, you inherited a certain in progress, you, you believe that there's a redesign, an expansion of the scope to be able to realize a more future, a better future state. You did say, is this District 3? Yes. This yes. is District 3, so I'm, I'm trusting that that commissioner is, uh, has, has, it, it agrees with this um, in that um, there's, and I'm very sensitive to the opinions and inputs of my peers. Um, you know, Commissioner Mulcair was very, no, we're going to keep this two lanes, no, we're going to keep this two lanes until I'm here. And he held his word. Uh, was there might have been a built up desire, but his voice was his, like, oh, okay, that's what you want from the district, that's fine. So I'm, I'm sensitive to saying that, okay, input from my commissioners <coughs> are important. And so if he, if she now, Madam Carthen says, okay, I don't know that area that well to the extent of being able to speak to it. Is it does it become man, you go take the two lanes of violence and travel here? 
And it's like, it's that, that's a residential area. They want to be slow down and turn it into a highway five. That's going to change that character area. Like, that's what job. And it, it's real subtle, right? What, you, what, you're, what you're proposing, like, and I'll make sure, like, do you know what this is about to do to that character area? That's fine. I, I take a position. But know that this, I, I get what you're doing in the optimal, but I think there's an overlay that says, okay, but you're about the business at hand. You're moving the system along. You're moving the system along. Then I'm like, okay, make sure that there's input. So I guess you're just sharing it with this. Um, I, I couldn't take any action until you get the person that's involved in this that's going to be accountable for this type of shift that they're on board. So what is it that you want us other than to hear this? I get, I get it. You know I got it fast. It's like I just followed the money all the way out. I followed how you were doing this. I get the expanded scope. I get the rationale. It's like, okay, do you see the impact on this? So I looked at this from my perspective like, ooh, I can handle the district too, but I'm not quite certain. Ooh, I don't even want to speak to it. So have you bounced this I, off of Commissioner Carthen? Maybe I, you I have. have. I've had discussions with uh, okay. Commissioner uh, Carthen. And we did have a public meeting uh, out there where the sentiment, uh, Madam Chair, you were there, the, the, uh, it was very well attended. The sentiment of, of the residents was, do the full widening now. Why has it taken so long? So, so there is that, that sentiment out there. What I, what I certainly will do is have a follow-up discussion with uh, the Commissioner Carthen to make sure that she understands the implications. And, uh, but I do need to provide the guidance back to the designer. So I, I, I would need at least uh, uh, administrative concurrence from, from this committee that if Commissioner Carthen is on board, that we can go ahead and provide that guidance because that's hey, the way. Are you this? It's a spot. I'm talking about this expanded scope. Well, that that is that is um, the uh, interesting thing because the project is budgeted, as I understand it, at three million now. And the full, Correct. the full expansion is three million eighty-two thousand. So there would have to be, we would have to find the eighty-two thousand if it stays at that. But but it is essentially. A, does the three million eighty-two thousand include design? The, we have the to design. Add that. We have to add that in there too. Well, okay. Yeah. See, that, that's where it's real slow. Down. So this, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm very accommodating in these, but the numbers have got to work. It's not shot done. I, I need to know. See, is that the speed of administrative concurrence? I gotta go. I gotta tell the designers. Like, no. And then we left with the aftermath of the numbers. Like, don't, don't do that. Like, just help us understand what we're looking at, so we can give you with assurance and, and, and not, you know, you better not have the other side of, of our response versus like, okay, well, include us. Help us understand what we're doing. We're probably more accommodating than like, no, I can hit a fastball now. And so I, I'm, I'm just. To, to, and I appreciate the county administrator, like, okay, now how are you going to visit it, though? What, what you going, what's going to sacrifice? What, what, what get camelized downstream? What, what get and I'm okay, we're going to have this conversation because it's public. What gets camelized? And I'm okay, I, I get it. But what, what gets camelized downstream as the next project, or what's at the bottom of the, with the line that now gets pushed below the line? What that, that gives you room for this, as we're saying, is a priority, which I'm okay. I'm willing to support a priority in another district, but what, what, what do we lose? So, based on the current estimates, um, now this doesn't, there could be, we did more money in, but this is based on 100 million. So, the, the last project that is currently funded. On the list is Thornton Road at Riverside Parkway, that intersection. Oh boy! So, all right, all right. So, no, we just had this conversation in finance, Mark. So now, back. there's numbers above too that have not been updated. So, you got Stewart Mill and Reynolds. We don't have construction contract there yet. So, we the number off to the right. You said seventeen thousand difference. Six hundred and twelve thousand. Six hundred twelve plus design, right? 
Yeah, plus the design. But the design it is what it is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, okay, but what's my net number that has not been factored in any kind of way, whether it's the first time estimate or amended, recast? 700, 612? 700 what? Is it 612 or 700? Like, what is the net new number we need to accommodate in our numbers? It would be 612 plus whatever the design contract what is now. All right, so what's that? I need a number. You're asking for administrative concurrence. 82,000 82, plus design. So Chris, if I said 3,000. We budgeted 3 million, right? Okay, yeah, from the budget side. From the budget side, so, and we're at 3, 8, 3 million, 82,000. <coughs> So it would be 82,000 plus, the number we're looking at is 82,000 plus the design. Correct. Okay. Yes, 700,000 you take. No. 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 The design's less than that. The total additional funds is, what, what would happen is if we do not go to the full five lane, we would come in under budget. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we go to the five lane configuration, then we would have to look for the 82,000 plus the design my recollection of design is there's somewhere around 150. I think that's what the contract is. Yeah, I think so. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So, so, so what we can do is we can go back and we can update. So there's projects up above here that haven't been refreshed. We don't. Yeah, we don't have the actual contract price in here. So Sweetwater Church and Doris. Um, we're getting close to bidding that. Have we bid out Bright Star John West yet? No. But we're close. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. So once we, and we can update Sweetwater and Doris, once we get those updated, then we should have a better feel on where we stand. I, I, I know it's within District 3 or District 4. Where are those those prices? So they're up above it. So I number see. one on the list, Stewart Mill Mills. That's District 3 and 4. Number two, Bright Star John West, that's in four. four. Number three, Sweetwater Church Doris Road, that's in four. Number four, Chapel Hill Road Intersections, that's in three. And then you have Highway 5, Douglas Boulevard. So those are all in play. Five. I mean, yeah, four. four. Yeah, they're all in play. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just going to focus on what wasn't in play yet that we that we may not get to, and you're telling me. The only one that's not in play right now is number seven, which is Thornton Road at Riverside. And how much is that? Well, they set aside a million. If we're gonna rebuild that thing, we already know that it gets torn up and it's just a truck. It's Seriously, now that's a million. We're only doing those radio sets though. Huh? It shouldn't take that much. Yeah, it shouldn't take that much. Yeah. But we need to update, Terry needs to update yes. some of these numbers up above. At least the ones we have a contract on. Yes, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. The puddles, the water, people, the cars get torn mm -hmm. up in there because we cannot not. Y'all go down there and do as much as you can. I get it, but it's, and I know you told me we need to work with the state. I'm like, okay, gosh, I need to fix that though. Just a lot of business, a lot of money. They're not broke. They're added to the digest. They look like to act like we can't fix that. It's like, you know, you see that voice in the now. So I, I just think all that truck traffic that we're talking about, and full loads, heavy loads, um, all the volume of people come down that high, down there cutting through, uh, we can do better right there. Um, but, but nevertheless, um, get the numbers for us. Um, I, I'm willing to work. Um, I just need to know what the numbers are. I will work my colleagues. Is that working our time frame with the, with the design? Oh, well, I mean, the, here tonight, the, 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 design, the designer is just going to wait until we give okay. a guidance. So, so we're good right now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we'll get some new numbers. Get new numbers first year. You know, get your, your first meeting is going to be busy, I'm sure. But yeah, we can move it forward. That's, that's not that. I'm teasing. That's no, not no. anything new. Yeah, but, but, but in other words, uh, I'll get my colleague to come through and we get the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm willing to, I'm sure, publicly, I'm willing to work to make sure that that gets whatever I might do. But recognizing that um, that's not coming off the list, but I'm willing to be able to patient to them. Mark the, the less refreshes when we get the paper comes down the pipe. And a we, good thing about the products are already in play, so that's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is that good enough? Yeah. Uh, another word. Okay, so Mark, make sure we get that captured gotcha. the right way. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, 
State Route 92 at Annawee. Yep. Mm -hmm. We had had discussion last time about uh, incorporating that, uh, at least some of the elements of analysis, and we've reached out to the uh, designer. He's given us an estimate of uh, 20, 28592 dollars to do the initial data gathering and a concept design for that intersection, yeah. incorporating into their current scope. Current okay. scope, existing client, okay. how much? 28,500. 28, uh, 28, so 29,000, and where's our source of funding? This one is, uh, I think we set aside uh, in the CTF. Show me. For the validation, we just had this conversation yesterday with Climate Mark, California, the takeaways to, and again, we're just, we're just saying we just need to. Sure. The State Route 92, no, State Route 92 and Riverside, that is the, the design that we just authorized, that was funded from Splunk. That was Splunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is whether this add-on to that scope would come from SPLOST as well, I would, yes. think. I would think. So we had two items that were, that had allocated SPLOST funds. So 250000 for Mount Vernon and Fairman Road, 250000 for Riverside and Fairman Road. Right. But we're thinking that Mount Vernon and Fairman is going to come in at a lot less. A whole lot less. Let's be sure. So, what what's the difference again on this one? Two, okay, say twenty, say twenty nine thousand for this is designed for the initial analysis only because we you know at least we get a sense for what it would take conceptually to solve the issue. It, you know, I'm going to say this respect. We like. Um, I know we hired you four months after Mark and all of us went to New York. It would have been nice to have you ahead of time. So a lot of this work I'm listening to, like I wish I would have had this ahead of time because it's making it a tough process that there's a, an optic perspective that, well, here's the budget, right? And you're coming with more uh, an, an ideal and more enlightened experience viewpoint. Like, and what you're hearing is the, as they say, the, 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 the collision of like, well, I get it. You, you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I get it. So it's almost an undoing, or I won't say undoing, a refining of our initial estimates but it, it has impact because it's not just as accommodating as you can. It's like, it's real trade-offs. It's real like, okay, because it's set in motion. So, I, I, so I'm so i saying this in, in the right way, in the respectful way, like, well, I get it. But, you know, but we also added those two, so we didn't I, have them on the original I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> look at, but, but, but to this point, but to, to Miguel's point, in, in all of our conversations, and the reason this one even came up, because it's, well, let's do it right. He made the comment earlier. Well, let's do the ideal design. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the whole transportation architecture. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing is a perspective that is not just a transaction at the moment. He's going down the list of projects y'all came up to fill in the bucket. And I'm like, God, I wish you would've been there ahead of time. Because we might have had a more a refined number set, right? Versus just mm -hmm. we're having to negotiate these one often trade-offs that are very real, that has political impact on other areas like, ugh. Because it would have had a more, you get where I'm going, so it's more of a just acknowledgement for the record. Um, and so it's not personal, we have to sort of pause, like, oh, I can't do that. Because it's not that he's wrong, it's just like, oh, you can't do it all based on, on previous commitments without um, implications. So anyway, thank you. I got it. So how do you want to handle this one, Mark? You think we can scale the money of $29,000 to you know, take? That's you know where we're at now. Mm -hmm. No capital transportation mm -hmm. fund mm -hmm. unless something's going to happen tonight, which I doubt. So, mm -hmm. how do we get there? Before you answer that, I think we can reallocate 125000 split it in half from Mount Vernon because I can't see a spending. Yeah. Well, it's 29000 and $51 million budgets. We're dropping the budget. Yeah. Let's see here. All right, so here we go. Can we start spinning? All right, I can keep up with this. Like, I, I hear you. Let's just go ahead and make, let's not float that, right? Let's not like that's write the check and say, I, I know I get paid next week, I'm gonna be okay. But yet, no, let's, let's not do the budget like that. But I got you. So let's go ahead and readjust the numbers. I'm okay. Madam Chair, if you're okay, go ahead and let them adjust. 
um, to shave to save twenty nine thousand dollars off of what Mount Vernon in, in ninety two. Mm -hmm. Sure. So twenty nine from two fifty leaves me two twenty one, something like that. Two twenty one. Can we do it that way and just keep it simple that we know it's there versus that we got to because that's where we yeah. where our books get off yeah. where we're, we're trying to anticipate now what did we just write a check for and you didn't put it in the register and then his like no I'm I've been married so I'm not married but I know that that's not a good move Mark so we're good. We'll let you. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Very good. Thanks. The uh, next item on the agenda, well, actually, it wasn't. Last uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to be the last one, maybe. But uh, we had discussion last time about uh, the schedule for meetings next year, and uh, it's, it's kind of difficult finding a good slot for the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that based on the research that I had a good target meeting time, but I may not be as 100% as there as um, I had. And, and just to refresh uh, the, the issue, the, the reason I would favor a change in the meeting date is because whenever there is a 30, 31 day, well, 31 day month, which is pretty regular. From this, from the our meet, standard meeting time, second or third Tuesday, I have to wait two and a half to near three weeks before the next agenda. And some of the items might be a little more urgent than that, rather than have a cold meeting, which obviously we've done uh, a number of times this year. But rather than do that, if we could find a good meeting time earlier in the month, then I would be able to limit it to a two-week window from the time that we have the discussion here to the meeting, uh, BOC meeting to act on the item. So initially, well, after some research, and Jessica, thank you for all the reference there, we had honed in on the first either Monday or Tuesday of the month at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now there are other other committees that already have meetings in that time slot. My understanding was, and still it is, that the technology committee meets at 2 p.m. on the first Monday. They were looking to reschedule. Um, I don't know how far they've progressed in terms of solidifying their schedule yet, but they last iteration of that research indicates that they meet every other month, right? right? Rather than every month. So perhaps there might be a way of accommodating um, a, a different schedule that we can both fit in and uh, having discussions with them. Originally I was looking for perhaps an off day that was not either a Monday or a Tuesday uh, that would work. I'm open to that discussion because Wednesdays tends to be a better day uh, for those of us that are here. Um, we beat the rush of having um, items for the agenda committee, the issue of meetings, and um, don't have to be worse as worried about getting stuff done by Friday for getting ready to get for Monday. So, so there is a a bit of a window there towards the middle of the week that would work, but everybody would have to be available. I realize, Commissioner Robinson, you're not full time, you're not here all the time. Um, yeah, I, and, and, and again, I on, on this one, the one thing is you, you like stability. And our finance committee has always had that you know, third Monday, 2 p.m., has become a staple for 11 years. Mm -hmm. Transportation is. And, it's, and I, I get yours is about the speed of decisions. But you know, PMZ people have to wait, and it's not that like which one of this it has is. We've got to wait three weeks. It's, it, it's the speed to do what to spend. Like just, just plan a little bit more to give yourself enough room. Other commissions they have to wait a whole month 
for their decision. So whatever they do in this month, they have to wait till the following month. And we know that that, that varies. So I think it, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, I'm of the premise that uh, this, I, I stack my weeks up according. We've had, you, you've heard us uh, amongst ourselves. This has got to be what, what works. This is for us to get feedback. Now, administrative, we've got to do what y'all want to do. Right? Y'all can meet as many times as you want to meet. But if you're looking for our feedback and buy-in with this system, you, you need to be able to accommodate our capacity, like, okay, but this works for me. Like, I'll catch you later. Y'all know I've got on finance committee before, and here you know that. Like, I'm, I'm willing to get out the way for the sake of the system, but like, okay, you get my feedback now or you get it later. But I don't, I'm like, the, I like that to me. It's stable. Leave it alone. We're all good. We come in, we do what we got to do. But it, it, the, the committee is for us to get stuff done, not to speed you all. See, that, that's with like, okay, I need to get what I got and keep going. And I'm looking like, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> you need my buy-in. It need to be comfortable. It can't just be, you're going to rush through. Okay, I, need to, I need to have comfort. And that's why I'm, I'm feeling this, you need to work with me. No, you need my vote. You need my input. And, and so that's all I'm feeling the, this, this movement that you're trying to do. It's like, what is the issue here? I, I, did, I just... Sure. Yeah. I'm trying to get your input. I, I know, but, but we already talked about, we said this at the last meeting. Nothing changed. You and I talked about this. Now, now but y'all had to admit it, like, I'll keep asking and asking. I'm okay with no and no and no. And I tend to be very definitive that says, guys, I'm okay. I, I, I don't want to change this. Two people missed the meeting. The chair gets to call his meeting. Herbie, I'm going to leave that meeting right there. It's like, okay, that's you. Leave that meeting alone, 2 p.m. On this day, it's standard. Everybody knows about it. Now, again, I'm hearing it's, it's about you. And it's like, well, if you're trying to get my input, then I said, I'm going to be available on this day. This is where you can, this is my bus stop. Right here. This, this, I'm, I'm, right here. I don't want to change that. I, I'm, I'm very careful when I say, Sherry, stack it up. When I'm here, I'm here. Right? I want to give 100% while I'm here. Many people want to come by, you know, I don't care if I met you or didn't meet you. You can come by and meet with me, and I'll talk to you. But I'm just saying, on this one, I'd like to leave it as it is. So I, I, I'm not going to call them. Um, now, we can work with a special call, and I have no problem uh, accommodating if necessary. But the chair calls the meeting, and I'm going to leave this meeting right here for this one now. So uh, we can be business at some other time, but let's just let this be right now. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Anything else? One last item. It, it was not on the original agenda, but I need some uh, clarity, I, I guess, at some point, is the uh, Moral and Altabelli contract. They requested additional 2% in, in their fee. Uh, I guess their, their contract allows for that. And they've submitted the request so the question is is there any action that is required by the county in terms of the contract itself or is it that they're going to be submitting uh, fees based on a different unit cost from that one i don't know let me remind us mark last time we did we did do this we did sign up there was some rate card you call the rate card rate card adjustments such an item, I haven't anticipated anything this year, but Mark, what, and I think the Mem Chair did sign that again, but they were asking for it. how much? 2%? Two percent. Yeah, two percent. But didn't we say not to exceed, but we did allow for a natural replacement, but that should have been factored in, right, Mark? Notwithstanding the adjustments for the road ratings, I'm, I'm okay with that. That's our yeah, that was adjust, right, that right. Was I'm okay. But it's not to exceed four million, right, or four percent, but we build in inflation. In other words, they come in at 3.99, recognizing they're going to have this 2% inflation for five years. I'm just making this up. But I don't know. I'd have to look at the contract, but I'm assuming not. Or Mr. PK, if it was included in the contract, uh, he wouldn't have asked us uh, to enter a requisition for the, the amount, not including the 2%. Which just happened today, which I emailed him back anyway. 
So how did you get this video? Who sent it to you? Uh, yeah. it, uh, Bill Peacock, he, he mentioned that it was an item that should come before the committee, and uh, he sent me the, the request from what? Do you hear anybody else on my online increase? Like, they, like, are they a vendor? I mean, like, okay, so are, vendor, are, are they on the vendor contract. list tonight? You, all right, so this, you see where I'm going, like, okay, they're acting, like, are they a vendor with standard inflation built in? That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... Maybe in their contract, but that's, I haven't. Bill never, he didn't talk to me about this, so... Can we just find out? But you're not asking for action for this, or they need, does it expire by 1231, and thus, what are you asking? Well, no, the contract's for six years, so... I know, but this... So the requisition when we put in with couldn't go into this year. Well, we, we could put a requisition in, it just wouldn't include any 2% increase. But are we obligated? Meaning, is that, was it this acknowledged in the contract? Was it acknowledged in the contract, and it's our discretion, are they trying to now ask for, hey, look, can y'all give me anything? Oh, no. You know we just got bought out. It's the people out there bring up this for me. me. You, you, so my, my issue that I'm hearing, and I recognize how uh, we acknowledge the fact that we want to hear from uh, from the new owners um, based mm -hmm. on Terry's Lost conversations that okay, is this based on the now new ownership? And they, are they putting pressure shifts that now we've bought pay for these retirements, which is okay, these six companies we've acquired, we now need to inflate these assets. Is that why people call and say, hey, can we find some more work? Um, you know, but when buddy called Mark, who called me and said, hey, can we find opportunities and stuff? You know, I, I, get, I get friends, I, I, I do get it. But it's one of those where, okay, so what do y'all ask? Can't, I don't know if we can do this right now until we actually know, is there, did the ownership change cause something to happen? Did, did, did they bought them in entirety? I, I don't know what this means. Are we slipping something through, like, I'll get with Bill. And we're anticipating the presentation, the first um, yeah. meeting in January. I'll get rid of this 2% increase. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so then there's no action on to Yeah, let's hold off. Because we did say public with the full board, so I don't want to insert yeah. what we talked about publicly. Okay, great. Anything? Alright, no, that's, that's all I had on the agenda. This was good, alright. Yeah. Um, last, last, I'm going to just add one item just because you and I talked about it just for the record. Where do we stand with our standby? We call the standby contractors. I know, just say what you said. On, on demand contractors, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah essentially they're, they're being reviewed. Uh, it is a two-phase review. Uh, they, they are in the process of making the first uh, review and they will provide a ranking of all of those submittals. Uh, there were 18 total, um, I believe 18 or 20. And so, so they will return to us a listing of, for this area class, for this yep. uh, type of, say, small intersection design, or large intersection, or bridges, whatever it might be, these are the consultants that submitted for those areas, and this is how they rank one through however many went for each area. So mm -hmm. you, you could have, for major intersections, you could have 10 consultants that wanted to be considered and they will be ranked one through 10. Mm -hmm. That will come to committee. They will make a presentation here at the committee. Um, and then we will give them guidance as to, okay, for phase two, we, we want to pair that list down to the top three, the top five, or whatever it might be. And then they will take, they will reach out through purchasing to those affected or selected and they will submit the phase two uh, response and then they will go through the same process again and we'll rank them again and uh, then it will come back to to this committee and based on the consensus of the committee will be um, who gets what gets presented to the board. Mm -hmm. so, but again we just sent them the consultants to list of the respondents we just sent them their their information correct and they're going to like third party independent they will come up with their own number correct so that, um, 
Sounds good. Right. Anything else? County Administrator, are you good? Yes, sir. Director Watson. I'm good. You all? Yes, sir. I'm good. Thank you. Madam Chair, you always get to you, you okay? Oh, I yeah. just have one thing, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to see, uh, just follow up on the road rating study we had. I know we, we're good at getting things done and, and it's in a book and I'll put a place on the shelf. Have we advertised that on the internet to allow the citizens to go and look at it? Is it on our website anywhere? I will and, check it. And maybe we could run a press release or something and let them know how this work is being okay. done. So they could refer to the website and look we'll at follow up on that. Absolutely. Is that something? Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, we'll do, I'm, I'm trying to think of where we would put this on our website, the actual document. Gary, I know that you've got a transit or it needs a different launch pad. Where would mm -hmm. you put this? On the transportation page, we would put a link to, to All right, so a link from the press release on the main page, Madam Chair, to the transportation page. Mm -hmm. All right. mm -hmm. That okay with you? I'm, I'm just. He just wanted, he wanted, he wants a place to have it archived. Now, will it be listed by? And I guess the, the question is that when you post it, if you're posting one big document that I got to go through all those pages, or are you gonna post four PDFs with each of them, you know, like you did my district, District Two, alphabetical order. Open that PDF. Ooh, here's everybody in alphabetical order. I can find my road. I see where. We can post it whichever way we want. I think it's easier for the average citizen to just to go by their, their, their you know, alphabetical by street name. It's the easiest. Versus trying to have a rating with the worst and then you got to go through all those names to find your street. I, I but uh, are you suggesting by district as well or just district? Yeah. Okay. Because, because you, some of them don't even know what district. So I understand. Citizens. I, I understand. They, they can put the link to find out what, what do they district. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. You won't be able to accommodate everybody. We, we consistent when we put stuff out there. It's, it's, it's by district. Um, um, you, you, all right. So do this to Madam Chair. If you don't know, put put. You got by district, and you can give her one at large with everybody else. So you got an entire listing. But but part of it is also again because district gets into what our priorities are. I, I think we keep them separate. You need to have a separate identity, but you got to acknowledge the average. Mm -hmm. okay. I got it. Is that okay, Madam Chair? I, I, I got your point. I got your point. Okay, can you handle that? I certainly can. All right, as soon as you can, so we can have an announcement. Mark, are you okay? I'm about to close this out. Mm -hmm. All right, let this meeting um, of the Transportation Committee um, of Douglas County, um, December, what, 17, 2019? Manager.